Welcome back, this is Montes, uh, trying out, well, I was not to say playing, but not necessarily playing, but doing homework for the Packet Tracer. Uh, homework assignment 7.4.1.12, uh, and as we left off from the other time, now this time we're going to do is add computers to an, to an existing network. Uh, this is the homework assignment, and also you have to keep in mind that some of these may be broken, some of them may have bugs like I've noticed the last time, but just keep in mind to, you know, review with your instructor to see uh, whether you made all the steps correctly. Uh, you can check here by clicking check results and then go into assessments and then it'll describe everything here. Uh, we won't know what's going to happen on this video, at least I won't know. You will actually now that I think about it. So you can just fast forward and figure out what I missed and so forth and be jerks and leave me in the dark. Anyways, uh, uh, let's talk more action. Now to see our objectives. <coughs> objectives. Configure the computer to use DHCP. Uh, DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which is basically a program that goes and puts addresses on all the devices. That's basically what's dynamic is you know, it's not static. Static is the same thing the whole time. Or here it is. Configure static addressing, right? So static means it's the same address on the same computer. Dynamic is constantly changing. Use IP config to retrieve host IP information. Use ping to verify connectivity. And hint, here's the important one. To ensure the instructions always remains visible during activities, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what it's referring to is this little button here. You click on that, right? So if you do this, it's gone. If you do this, click here, it always stays on top. So we're going to add that in. Okay, anyways, instructions. In this activity, you will configure two computers in a branch office network. The company uses DHCP for dynamic addressing on all PCs. So they're all there. And this is the corporation, which is the cloud, branch office, branch switch, which gives the information to these two computers. Uh, server, which means that these computers connect to the server. Server, I think, should stay uh, static. So computers can always access it at any time, so on and so forth. We'll, we'll see later on. Uh, later on down here somewhere. Where is it? Okay. Don't skip forward. Step 1. Study the topology. The topology shows two PCs, a switch, a server, a router, and a cloud. So the cloud is over here. The router is here. The switch is here, the two PCs are here, and the server is here. Alright. Notice the PCs are connected to the brand switch using a straight through cable. Straight through cables. <coughs> Notice the green dots on each side of the straight through links next to PCs and the uh, brand switches. Green dots on both sides of the links indicate that the correct cable type was used to interconnect these devices. Yep, I see them, they're all nice and green. Note, there should be uh, green dots on both ends of the cable connections. If you don't see the green dots, uh, navigate to the options preference from the packet menu and uh, click show link lights box check. Checkbox. Well, I turned it on and it should already set up automatically, so it's not an issue. All right. If not, what it's referring to is go to options, which is up here, options, preferences, and then it says show device, no, there is it, uh, show animation, where is it, show link lights, under preferences from the packet tracer menu and check show link lights, where is it, always show portal opening, show device, show, uh, oh, here we go. Show link lights, that's what it's referring to. Anyways, let's close this, go back. Step 2. Configure DHCP on the PCs. Click PC0. Alright. Let me just move this a little more that way. We don't need it that big. Nice PC. There we go. Click this. Uh, a PC window will open. Uh, the PC window. Select desktop tab. Alright. Desktop tab. Where there's no gains. This person is boring. Uh, at least they should have like Minesweeper at least. Uh, click IP configuration, select H uh, DHCP button to enable the PC to act as active. Okay, first things first. Uh, IP configurations. IP configurations. And select DHCP. DHCP, dynamic host. Uh, 
but I forgot what it was, something protocol. And all right, we had that. Uh, configuration protocol, that's what it means. Uh, decline. You should see the following message after clicking CHCP, DHCP request successful. Well, it looks successful. Yeah, here it is. DHCP request successful. All right. Let's see. Uh, close PC0 configuration window by clicking the X in the upper right corner. All right. Uh, click on PC1 and then basically do the same thing, right? Uh, in the PC window, desktop tab, configurations, dynamic host. All right. Dynamic host PC client close this. All right. Now we have the two configured as dynamic host. Let's see. Step three, observe the IP configuration information assigned to each PC. Click PC0. All right, let's move this over here. Command prompt, right? Uh, click command prompt at the PC. Put IP configuration all. So I'm just gonna copy this and right click. No, I do control copy. Go here, right click, paste. Enter. There we go. All right, uh, record the IP address subnet uh, mask default gateway dns server address information that was successfully uh, no that was successful. that was dynamically assigned to uh, via dhcp pc0 so where is it um ip address which would be the ip ip4 i think this would be it right uh default gateway which would be the default gateway here oops the default gateway here Subnet mask would be right here. DNS server address would be right here. And that was dynamically, yeah, all right. Uh, record all this information for both the PC0 and PC1. Uh, the only difference between the two actually is that, let's see, at pump prompt, enter the ping, PC1 address, PC0 address, and all that, which, You'll notice that the only real difference between all this information will probably be, I think, this little number here. This one has one and the next one will have zero, I assume. All right, so at the very least, if not, we can always go down here. Let's see, enter the ping, branch office, and so forth. Let's see, I know that it's repeated down here somewhere. But anyways, yeah, so we need to ping each of these address, the PC router IP address and PC zeros address, ping, this. This is basically the router. Is it the router? Let's see. We can figure out what the router is by putting our mouse over this. Is it? We could do that. There is another way to find out where the router information is. Or we can just go through all this information here. Is it? No. That's a CLI. Where is the equivalent IS command? I know that by... Is it right click? Usually you can mouse over it and a little box will appear over it. Maybe. If not, uh, the router is basically this one. Branch office ethernet is the router. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay, ping PC1 with PC0. So the PC0, we need to be, uh, ping PC1. And then the PC1, we ping PC0. So let's quickly look up uh, what was the... Oops, not that one. Uh, prompt command. IP address, right? The IP address is 172.16.11, right? And if we go over here, and then right click, paste, enter, you see 172.16.12. So the difference between the two is that little number there. That's the only number. So let's go over here and let's ping PC1. So we write P-I-N-G space. <coughs> 172.1. Point, point, no, not point one, point 16.1.2. There we go. It did the connections. Uh, Pink C packet re uh, sent, received, nothing lost. Now that we're done with that, we can close this up and go to PC1. And we can ping the other direction. One, no, no, is it one? Yeah, 172.16.1.2. No, point one. Oh, 
Well, I forgot to ping. We had to write ping. Ping! Space. Oh, what's going on? Hold on. Ping! 172.16.1.1. Enter. There we go. Sent, received, nothing lost. So we've made those two steps. Now let's go to uh, PC0 and ping the router address. So let's jump over here, go over here, ping, and this is the router address. So we're going to copy and paste this. Control, copy, go here, P I N G space, and right click, paste. Enter. There we go. Uh, packet for sent for receive nothing lost. So it did the connection. And now what we can do is go to the second PC and do the same thing. And that should give us our opportunity to get credit for those. Ping. Right click. Paste. Enter. There we go. For sent for receive nothing lost. Now that we're done with that. We're going to do switch to static address. <clears throat> Despite all the benefits of dynamic addressing schemes such as DHCP, sometimes a static scheme is required. Change PC1 to DHCP to static addressing. Now the reason why dynamic addressing is beneficial is since, since the address changes every so often so when people try to hack into your computer, I think it's one of the explanations. I'm not exactly sure, but when people try to hack into your computer and try to find the address that is in the computer that's con that your computer is addressed to, at one point this address is going to change. So when they try to connect back to your computer, they won't connect to a computer that's there anymore. Um, but the problem is when it comes to servers on the other hand, servers need to have a static address because they need other computers to find it right away every single time. So servers are more danger of getting hacked and host. So you have to keep that in mind. At least that's what I remember. I could be completely wrong. Anyways, uh, click on PC1, open configurations, IP configurations, and let's see, static, click static. So we click on static, right? And in, on the previous time, I explained that you have to be careful how you put this information there because it will automatically push it in. And you need to keep in mind that it's not going to be the same one as it says there. So, address. 172.16.1.20 And I think that should fill it out. Now, as you notice, you see this 255.255.0.0. The subnet has to be three two five fives, so this is missing. So that's what something you have to be careful of. So two five five, and then we can set the rest of information, which is the one seven two dot sixteen dot one dot two five four, and then the DNS. Oh, you know what? Why type it in? We can just copy and paste it. Control copy, control, uh, wait, yeah, paste. All right, there we go. Uh, 209.165.200.226. All right. Now we're done with that. We can close this IP. Actually, let's see, configuration, close IP configuration. So it just doesn't mean to close the whole window, it's just IP configuration. Okay, verify connectivity. Test connectivity by sending pings across the network. Click PC1. To open the configuration windows. Okay. Uh, the desktop. We're already desktop because this is close the configuration window, not the whole window. So we can go right back to here. Click the command prompt. Command prompt. <coughs> Ping gateway typing this, right? So we're gonna type this. Uh, control C. So basically we're gonna ping once again the same address. So we're going to scroll down, P-I-N-G, uh, okay, right, oops, come on, paste, ping, that. There we go, let's see, 
packages for sent for received zero loss good that means let's see the address default ping the default gateway by typing this the ping should be successful the ping was successful ping server zero by uh, pinging this all right so let's go for it control c right click paste let's go for it there we go uh four cent four received nothing lost all right the ping should be successful it was successful all right uh, ping the router use an entry point for corporate cloud by typing ping 172 so on and so forth so control copy we're gonna ping that as well control paste done I should do it let's see four cent for receive nothing lost good the ping should be successful type in which one should we do? Did we do this repeatedly? Ping, ping, ping. Am I pinging the same thing multiple times? I think we should be ping. Let me see. 10, 10, 20, 20. Oh yeah, I accidentally pinged the same thing twice. My bad. All right. Uh, con wait. Take this. Control copy. Control paste. All right, right paste. Is it going? Oh, there it is. Timed out. Why did it timed out? Request timed out. Oh, a bit lost. The ping should be successful. For full connectivity has been achieved within the network. But strange that there is a little bit of packet lost in there. That's quite strange. Let's see if we can ping it again. Just just to be sure it's not some fluke in the system. There we go. Much better. There we go. Four cent for receive zero loss. I'm curious as to what exactly happened here. Uh, there is a few logical explanations to why this would happen, uh, but I'm not sure yet. But the four, the four cent and the three receive is basically this. This one was the one that couldn't go through, and these are the three that were received. So one, two, three, four, and they were in received. This one only got three. But this should do it. This one should get it all done. Now that we have this, we can close this down and we can check the results. Congratulations on completing this activity. Nice. All right. Looks like we did everything here. Looks very well done. Now we can close this up. And that was quick. Uh, how much time do I have? I have it all set up here. Let's see. 17 minutes. That took 17 minutes. Actually, the timer should be right here 19 minutes actually it took two minutes to prepare all this but anyways there you go that's for packet tracer for 7.4.1 uh 12 this is not the version of the packet tracer this is the actual homework assignment anyways uh don't forget to like subscribe and share if you have any questions or comments leave it at the bottom if you have any criticisms or you would just want to be a jerk and say ha you didn't fail or something like that then go ahead Anyways, I hope you enjoyed these. Hopefully it's helpful for you. If not, also leave a comment telling me, redo this, you made a mistake. I'll go for it. Anyways, so see you later. Goodbye, farewell, bye-bye, bye-bye.